off, so I start recording uh, this webinar. Uh, so uh, the University of Florence is very happy to uh, welcome all of you, the speakers and the people which are instead listening uh, to the uh, webinar, which is called Frontier Research and Career Opportunities in Environmental Science. Uh, it, this is really a hot topic because the current situation in terms of climate change, uh, sustainability of cities, green infrastructure, <clears throat> green energy, uh, new materials okay. really require new skills. And the university have the difficult task to actually provide students with a skill identifying the evolving gaps that there are between supply and demand. This fair is a unique opportunity to put together top university in the field, in environmental field, with innovative and young entrepreneur. So uh, I'm really happy to start this. And the first speaker is Professor Francesco Ferrini of University of uh, Firenze. Uh, Francesco has worked a lot and will give a presentation which is on the city of the future, how they will be and how they should be. Francesco, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, good morning to you all. I'm sharing my presentation. I hope you see the presentation on your screen. And I will talk about the city of the future, how they will be or how they should be. I based my presentation on the city of Hanoi because I have been there last, last year and uh, in the end of 2019. So uh, first thing is to, okay, sorry. Uh, more than 100 years ago, Patty Geddes, which was, who was a famous landscape architect said, a city is more than a place in a space, it's a drama in time. Unfortunately, we didn't take any uh, lesson from this phrase and we have created cities that cause stress because cities can be chaotic, great, polluted, uh, packed, nervous, dangerous, and whatever uh, you wanna uh, call them. But at the same time, a uh, city can be fascinating. This is Anhoi, uh, uh, open, artistic, beautiful, evolved, lively, livable, vital, and vivid. So we have to change our paradigm when we think about the city. It must not be the green at the service of the city, but the city at the service of the green. And today there is an article in a newspaper, one of the most famous newspaper and uh, widely uh, bought newspaper in Italy about this. So we have to compare urbanization uh, because urbanization, especially in Southeast Asia or in all Asia, is uh, growing steadily. You can see this histogram, how the population from 1970 to 2050 is projected to be almost 3.5 billion people who will live in uh, urban areas in Asia. And all over the world, we expected to have more than 70% of the total uh, world population to live in urban areas in 2050. So we have to think about the future city because there will be the places where most of the people in the world will live in, in the close future. And you see, this is Hanoi. Hanoi uh, had 2.4 million people in 2006 and is close to 4 million in 2017. And now it's more than uh, 4 million. So in, in about 15 years, the total population grow, growth was 1.5 million. Uh, citizens. And so we have to build in the future city that will be of the people, for the people, and uh, planned, thought, and realized by the people. So in my opinion, future smart cities must not be an urban vanity project, but must be instead focused on putting the needs of the people at the center. And this is a, a new project for uh, a southwest, southeast part, I think, of Hanoi that will be realized in the next future. So which are gonna be the targets for the city of the future? We have to improve health and well-being of the people. We have to mitigate the urban heat island. We have to manage the stormwater management to reduce pollution, to preserve biodiversity and to increase the CO2 storage inside the city where most of the CO2, more, about three quarters of the world CO2 is produced in urban areas. So the first target is to improve the green and well-being of the, the sorry the well-being and health of the people, and we had to introduce a new concept, which is the one health concept. We recognize that the health of human beings is totally linked to the health 
of the animals and to the health of the environment. So if we have a healthy environment, we can have also healthy animals and we, are, we will be uh, healthier than, uh, than we are now. So the new vision, vision sorry, for the future uh, will be the microbiome inspired green infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that will be multi-sensorial, that will be multiculturally inclusive, and they will be foraging friendly green spaces because we are totally linked with the natural environment, totally linked with the soil environment, totally linked to the animal uh, microbiome. And so the second target would be the reduction of urban heat island. The urban heat island is very strong all over the world, but especially in Southeast Asia. Asia. So we have to think of city that a different level, we reduce the urban heat island and vegetation uh, can provide shade so they can decrease the, uh, the temperature, they can increase the albedo and with, uh, with the evo transpiration, they can decrease sensible heat flux, they can decrease uh, surface and, and air temperature. And other target is stormwater management to increase uh, the, the, the uh, percolation of water in the soil. So we have to increase the porous surface and to decrease the unpermeable uh, surfaces in the city because this will affect strongly the water cycle in the city. Now uh, in, in a very urbanized uh, city, uh, almost 100% of the surface is impervious. And in this case, only a very small part of the water that will fall will uh, percolate, will go into the soil. Most of, of this water will be uh, lost for stormwater uh, flow. And so this will be the problem. More flooding uh, in the city, more flood at the country level. You, you can see an article published a few years ago about the urbanization and climate change impacts on uh, in Vietnam, this is Kanto uh, city. And, and you can see here how it will change uh, in the future uh, according to four different, two different, sorry, urbanization scenario, how the uh, possibility of inundation will increase from 64 to eight maximum flood depth and how the uh, potentially flooded area will increase from five to 22 according to different urbanization scenario. One, the, the first scenario is uh, like the business as usual and the, uh, the, the future scenario with the strong urbanization uh, that will come. So especially in Vietnam, but all over the world, climate change is a potential threat uh, uh, in, in the future and uh, the future infrastructure will be very vulnerable to climate change impacts if we don't change, if it won't change, sorry, from the city of the present, like it, it is Hanoi now, to the city of the future, like it, it will be in the future. So it's important in the planning and design process of future cities to avoid the impacts by preserving the natural features uh, by using conservative planning techniques reducing the impacts of urbanization by reducing soil sealing and impermeabilization, and then managing the impacts by using the new technique of low impact development, sustainable urban drainage system, or water sensitive urban design for stormwater management. And other target, reducing pollution. Unfortunately, you can see that in Asia in 2018, Hanoi was the second most polluted city in, uh, in, 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 in the area and Ho Chi Minh was the 15th. So we have to take care, we have to think about this and to, uh, to change uh, the, the planning of the city to reduce the impact of, of pollution. Uh, this, this data I took yesterday this, from this website, you can see that uh, air pollution is still very high in, uh, it's, it's a little better, better compared to two years ago, but it's still, uh, very high, especially for uh, particular matter. Uh, final target is to increase the CO2 sequestration and storage. And you can do this by increasing the, uh, the tree uh, canopy. So the tree cover uh, in the city, favoring the planting of large deciduous trees and introducing evergreens suitable for the urban environment. 
And what will be the results? The results will be putting the green at the center of our lives and to introduce the concept of urban greening factor. The urban greening factor is a tool to evaluate and quantify the amount and quality. So the quantity and the quality of urban greening uh, that a new, uh, new plant provides to inform decisions about appropriate levels of greening in new development. So this will be the future Hanoi. Uh, Hanoi is planting a lot of trees uh, to change the future of the city. They have short-term, mid-term and long-term planning of new uh, green areas. Uh, so Hanoi is changing from urbanization versus arborization. Arborization means that they will have more tree, more green, more uh, green areas in, in the city. So this is how Hanoi should look in the next uh, future. So it means afforestation, planting trees, greening the city, bringing nature back to cities, increase biodiversity, improving climate condition, and reduce also the, uh, the pollution. So this will be the city of the future. These are the new planting in Hanoi. Uh, you see uh, when the tree were planted a few years ago and how uh, the, the streets are uh, looking now. They are completely different. The uh, pollution is, is, uh, is going to be uh, reduced and people will live much better in this uh, future future city. And this will be the uh, the new look for Hanoi ten years after the expansion. This is our new these are new projects for for Hanoi. Uh, you you will see trees everywhere. They are planting now a lot of trees. And uh, I'm finished. So thanks thanks very lot very much for your attention. I think it's the, this is the word this is the phrase. Uh, thanks for the attention in, in Vietnamese. So I'm finished. Thank you very much, Francesco. Uh, for the students which are listening from, especially those from Vietnam, we will have a session of question and answer at the end. So you can ask questions to Professor Farini and the other speakers uh, at the end of the, um, of the seminar. Uh, second speakers are Daniela La Rosa and Cristina Satriano from the University of Catania. Please, Daniela, you can share your screen or Cristina. Yes, good morning. I'm sharing my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Daniele La Rosa. Uh, I'm coming from the University of Catania in South Italy. And this morning, together with my colleague, uh, uh, Cristina Satriano, uh, we'll uh, present some uh, uh, opportunities um, related to, to new projects that we are currently, currently working on um, uh, together with uh, different uh, partners and different university uh, in uh, Vietnam. Um, and all these projects are dealing uh, with uh, uh, a timely uh, revision of the content of uh, uh, university master course um, related, of course, to uh, climate change uh, uh, issues and more bro broadly to uh, environmental uh, issue. So these projects that we will present you uh, this morning uh, offers different possibilities for uh, um, collaboration, also for uh, for um, uh, both students at master levels, but also for PhD students, as we will see uh, in some minutes. Um, um, I have to say that um, uh, all these projects uh, that we are presenting. Uh, this morning, this afternoon, are um, uh, project funded by uh, the Erasmus Plus pro uh, program, and more precisely, is to a specific uh, categories of uh, Erasmus Plus uh, program, which are the capacity building projects. Um, capacity building projects in the field of higher education are these uh, uh, big and complex uh, uh, projects that try to um, offer. Uh, a modernization and internationalization uh, of um, the content of uh, uh, partner countries uh, in different fields, of course, not uh, only related to um, environment or uh, climate change or whatever, but they could, they could offer uh, a wide uh, um, uh, program of, uh, of, um, of um, revisions 
uh, they try to uh, address some um, uh, challenges of uh, higher education system in uh, program countries uh, and try to uh, make this uh, uh, the, 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 the higher education system more close to the uh, European system, uh, increasing the cooperation, of course, with the European Union, uh, also trying to uh, promote uh, uh, contact and collaboration awareness, intercultural awareness uh, between uh, the uh, collaborating uh, higher, higher education institution. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's very nice and um, um, possibilities that these uh, uh, projects are offering to both European uh, partners and program uh, countries partners like Vietnamese, of course, uh, institution and university. So the first project that we are presenting today, it's called uh, Mare, which in Italian means uh, sea. So it uh, <laughs> was a coincident um, uh, choice that was done for the acronym of this project. Um, uh, MARE stands for Marine, Coastal and Delta Sustainability for Southeast Asia. So it is actually a project um, that uh, is dealing with the sustainable uh, management uh, of um, coastal areas, uh, not only in Vietnam, but also in Malaysia. So it's a, it's a wide uh, project, uh, uh, including uh, uh, 13 partners from uh, uh, five different countries. So we have uh, partnered uh, in Germany, in Italy, in Estonia, and uh, in Vietnam and in Malaysia. Um, the specific focus and emphasis of this project is on climate change, because as you are probably aware, uh, climate change is the, the, the main driver for changes in the relation between uh, uh, the, the, um, the coastal zones, which in, of course in Vietnam are fundamental areas to be uh, sus sustainably uh, managed and planned. Uh, so this, um, this project ex uh, deals ex exactly with this, uh, with this topic. And um, it's a very ambitious project uh, as are many of the Erasmus Plus projects. So, uh, the main, the main, of course, objective is to reform um, existing bachelor, masters, but even also some PhD programs, both in Vietnam and in Malaysia, uh, to try to um, increase the uh, the specific content uh, of uh, uh, this program with uh, new or revised courses dealing with uh, uh, climate change and coastal management. And of course, there is a big uh, um, emphasis also on new technologies that are made available uh, to students, to also um, uh, teachers. Um, so we will, uh, uh, we are right now producing a, a shared infrastructure um, to 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 uh, offer uh, these new courses. Uh, so with uh, a lot of um, uh, MOOC uh, contents, with a, a sectoral collaborative platform in order to share uh, students, to share um, um, even research topic among all the partners. And of course, there is some uh, a wide uh, um, range of disseminating activities that will take place, like, like international summer school uh, in, um, uh, in Italy, in Sicily in, for the, in the specific case. Uh, there are a lot of um, open access publication that will be made available uh, we, will, we will try to bring together also the students within this publication, so within the, uh, the more uh, research-related uh, aspect of, uh, of the project. Uh, so um, these are an example of courses that will be uh, revised, um, and also the new courses that will be uh, produced by the, the project. As, as you will see, I, will, I have no time to go into details, but of course I, I will be happy to take your uh, um, question at the end of the of this seminar. So we have uh, um, management of tropical ocean and climate, uh, marine pollution, also um, courses related to environmental uh, in, uh, normative issues, uh, etc. So I now um, leave the the floor to my colleague Christina that will show you um, the, the other project that University of Catania is working on in this, um, this year. So thank Christina, you, you can. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, as you can see, this is the next project that is called the forest that stays for future oriented chemistry is also a capacity building project, so which is uh, actually just started we had a kickoff meeting last month, and it, evol it involves uh, four European universities. Uh, Linköping University in Sweden, which is actually the coordinator, uh, Instituto Politecnico de Tomar in Portugal, uh, of course, Catania University, Mountain University of Leuven uh, in Austria, three uh, partner universities from Russia, uh, Southern Federal University, Northern Arctic Federal University, and Novosibirsk State Technical Universities, and two universities from Vietnam, with the, our colleagues uh, from Vietnam National University of Forestry and Taiwan University. Uh, please next slide. And uh, so what is the, uh, what is forest? Forest has a focus on the chemistry as a, a key player to help in mitigating climate change uh, risk in order to develop uh, sustainable tools and green chemistry technologies uh, by challenging the very specific uh, local uh, issues that uh, are addressed in these partner countries, which are Russia and Vietnam, like the long draft, strong fruits, air pollution, and so on. Uh, this project has uh, four specific objectives. The first one, you know, uh, to develop a new interdisciplinary a multi-track master program in future-oriented chemistry, and this is to tackle with some challenges that were raised by our colleagues in Vietnam. So, like the lack of specialists able to uh, solve uh, these complex uh, um, problems of environment and sustainability, and also some uh, uh, sometimes the not sufficient performance of uh, most uh, graduates chemistry, uh, current chemistry programs, and also the lack of state-of-the-art programs corresponding to the trends in chemistry development. Also upgrading the teaching staff skills in learning, uh, teaching and uh, assessment, and to set up a center of excellence in future-oriented chemistry. And last but not least, to raise uh, an awareness about uh, in the local communities, for the uh, relating to the climate change impact and uh, some solution that chemistry can offer through the education uh, for the mitigation of such effects. And especially for the uh, setup of center of excellence, uh, that must be noted that some of the issues that were raised as challenging were the needs of uh, to strengthen the uh, the, the cooperation between the business and the university to develop uh, a regional economy, science-based expertise uh, to make decision on uh, climate change mitigation. And uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So the main outcomes that we will expect by this uh, master program is a new multi-track uh, uh, module-based curricula based uh, on the uh, Bologna provisions uh, with engagement in the program in overall of 90 teachers with these new enhanced skills, five centers of excellence, a community of experts uh, that can deal with chemical solution for mitigating climate change, and a trained community of uh, 60 stakeholders from society and uh, from industry representatives that uh, can uh, help to uh, for lo local regional policy decision making uh, things that can be adapted to mitigate this uh, climate change really, really uh, relevant risk. Uh, so I think we can go to the last slide. And uh, we want to thank you with, uh, for your presence, for attending this seminar. Here are the contacts from Daniele and myself. And just the last advertisement, uh, if you want to take part for, to the, another presentation of University of Catania, it will take place on Wednesday, the 21st of April, uh, 8 to 10 uh, p.m. Vietnam time. And thank you again for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christina. Thank Thanks, Daniela. The next one is Professor Federico Pulselli of the University of Siena. 
for the student, you probably mm -hmm. know that we have or every university has uh, some other webinar or something, so you can join different topics, and you have a lot of presentations also in the web page. Uh, please, Federico, and then this is the last university. Then we have yeah. Okay. Federico, you are muted. You are muted. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my presentation. Please, can you please confirm if you can see that? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the full screen. Okay, I'm going to tell you the story of an alliance. An alliance uh, in our territory. This is a project uh, that is uh, that has been implemented at the local level here in the province of Siena, where I work and where I where I live. But uh, this project can can be implemented everywhere by virtue of its uh, um, replicability. Uh, this is the story of a research project that has been translated into something else involving a lot of, of uh, people in the surrounding. This is the Regis project that is the uh, greenest gas inventory of the province of Siena. And since 2008, 14 years ago, uh, 13 years ago, the Regis project has been providing uh, the, uh, the, the greenest gas inventories in time series for the province um, uh, in part 75 ISO 1464 uh, one. The method we are using for this uh, very long project is based on 2006 IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Guidelines and the refinement by the same institute uh, delivered in 2019. We use the mixed responsibility to uh, assign responsibility to different actors, the geographical responsibilities in the case of the IPCC guidelines, plus consumer-based responsibility for some items, uh, for example, electricity of waste generation. Uh, in the province of Siena, uh, we have a part of our electricity um, uh, coming from uh, the geothermal uh, production. We use the precautionary approach, uh, and uh, uh, as I can, uh, as I said before, we had uh, uh, until 2015 the certification um, ISO. Um, the method is uh, also based on a bottom-up approach. That means that we try to uh, monitor all the activities uh, directly from uh, the, 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 our territory, instead of scaling down data from regional and uh, uh, country uh, level. Uh, in what consists an, uh, uh, a GHG inventory? It consists in, in four chapters that are energy, industrial processes, wastes, and uh, uh, agriculture, forestry, and, uh, uh, and other land use, which are in turn divided into a, a lot of items that demonstrate the uh, uh, wideness of the, of the problem of GHG uh, emission that involve a lot of activity in, the, in, uh, in, a, in an area. Uh, at the same time, uh, with, the, with this uh, um, disaggregation in many items, we have the opportunity to understand which are the main sources of greenhouse gas. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, implement some measures, some political, administrative, economic, and environmental measures to uh, um, improve the uh, improve the results. These are the results. Uh, in 2008, we had the first year balance for 2006, and the results were pretty good because we understood that the uh, local forest ecosystem. Uh, were able to absorb almost 70% of the total GHG emission in the province. This was a good result and was accepted, was uh, uh, taken into consideration by the political administration that uh, implemented a parallel project, a political project called Siena Carbon Free, um, in order to achieve the uh, um, ambitious result of carbon neutrality, 
um, um, by 2015. What is carbon neutrality? It's a very well-known task that, that uh, everywhere is, uh, uh, is a global task almost everywhere. And it means that we have emissions, but these are uh, completely compensated by the absorption capacity of the local ecosystem, especially forest ecosystem. Well, uh, in 2011, after the implementation of some policies based on our research, we could achieve this task. And the province of Siena is now carbon neutral since 2011. All the uh, emissions are completely absorbed, compensated by the local ecosystem. And this result has been maintained until now. Uh, this is the result of 2019. As you can see, we have a very small margin uh, for 2019. The number one in green corresponds to what we, uh, we have, we still have in terms of absorption, but we must, as you can imagine, we, mu it, it, we must pay a great attention because we risk uh, due to, a, I don't know, a fire or a, an economic uh, uh, reprise or something like that, we risk to lose the carbon neut neutral status. And this is a, a kind of warning for every one of us. Uh, these are, this is the tendency of the main uh, items. The fourth chapter of the, uh, the, the uh, greenhouse gas inventory, uh, namely energy, industrial processes, wastes and uh, agriculture, forest and other land use. And the energy obviously uh, is the, uh, pays the, uh, plays the main role in, uh, in our uh, balance. And as you can see in the last years, we have a, an increase in the consumption uh, of uh, energy. It is a, a warning for, for us. Uh, the dynamics of the project is very interesting because year after year we have um, we had a, um, a iterative process that start from research. The research is validated by an, an a, a third institution that um, delivers. Uh, the balance, the certified balance to the province, uh, provincial administration. On the basis of certified data, the province administration can implement policies and the uh, year, uh, the successful year, uh, we can, the next year, we, we, we can validate the policies and uh, trying, trying to find uh, the effect that these policies had on, on, the, on the general balance. Uh, which are these policies? For example, energy savings, the control, the monitor of the uh, public and private heating system, the uh, incentive for renewable energy, a uh, very careful uh, waste management with the uh, contemporary management of different plants. Communication and dissemination is very important to uh, let people know what we are doing. Uh, Anti-fire plans, uh, in the forestal uh, ecosystem, almost 45% of the entire land is covered by forest. So this is very, very important. Public transport and uh, mobility policies and so on and so forth. Uh, after the political intervention and administrative uh, implementation of measures and policies, uh, we realized that all the people must be uh, involved in this project. And this is the, 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 the reason why we tried to uh, create the alliance involving uh, single persons, families, schools, organization, association, and especially enterprises uh, that play an important role in uh, emission and eventually and possibly in controlling this emission. All is about the, uh, the goal number 13 of the uh, uh, Agenda 2030 uh, uh, from the United Nations. In general, and to conclude, we are trying to move toward better knowledge and diagnostic tools for the society and the economy. And there are a lot, uh, we have plenty of tools uh, to uh, monitor um, things 
uh, uh, tools which, which can be considered as complement of the economic and social traditional tools. Uh, uh, the greenhouse gas is one of them, but we have a lot of possibility to know more and more and to uh, make better and better choices uh, for uh, our life. Uh, uh, the um, most interesting thing in this project is the dynamics that starts from the research and then we have a lot of points involving communication, education, awareness, involvement, improvement of results, territorial marketing, until the most important goal we have to achieve, that is the sustainability of our system. Uh, this is a story that is very fascinating, but is not for free and is not, and is not eternal. We must uh, spend some efforts, energy, money, and intelligence to uh, achieve this goal and maintain it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Federico, uh, for the, especially for the student. We have seen how the university addressed this problem. You have seen that Florence uh, proposed, uh, with an example on Hanoi, proposed planting trees. Uh, Siena proposed what they've done in Siena, which is really a very good example of uh, cooperation between the society and universities at the level of household. Now let's see how the firms, because now we have two testimonials from firms, let's see how the firms, and I'm sure that the first testimonial, which is Federico Bestiani, uh, will tell us something which is also very, very important because is on the solar uh, panels. So Federico, it's your turn, thanks. Hello everyone, thank you very much uh, for uh, hosting me. Uh, I introduced a little bit about uh, myself, and then uh, I will uh, introduce about uh, our company uh, here in, in Vietnam. So uh, I, I, I am uh, 30, 33 years old and I studied, uh, of course, in, uh, in Italy, in, uh, in the University uh, um, of Milan, in the Politecnico. I am an engineer and uh, my, my, my field of study, apart from uh, engineering, uh, was uh, management uh, and also enrolled to a new class uh, that uh, was called uh, uh, sustainability and energy management. So that class was just started uh, on the very first year where I joined. So it was a result of, uh, of an initiative similar to the one we are seeing today. And that the course of study was started uh, and I had the opportunity to join and to learn more about uh, the application of uh, uh, engineering and management uh, on the green energy field. After a few years of, uh, of work in, in uh, other companies where I learned uh, a lot uh, um, about, the, about the, the work life and the business, uh, I set up uh, our company in Vietnam, which is uh, called uh, BC. Um, you can see the presentation, right? Yes, we can. Perfect. So we, we are uh, focused uh, uh, here in Vietnam on uh, uh, developing uh, engineering and building solar systems uh, for factories. This is uh, uh, my passion that, uh, that I learned in, in, the, in the university. And uh, it's so good for me to have the chance and the opportunity to do it on a, on a daily on a, on a daily basis. So we started in Vietnam uh, in uh, 2018. And uh, since uh, I, I graduated uh, in uh, 2010, uh, and, uh, and uh, I, I brought my, my experience uh, on, uh, on, uh, on a theoretical level and also on a practical level into, into this company. So what, what we are doing uh, is uh, uh, engineering and construction uh, of Operation and maintenance. Uh, we uh, sometimes also invest ourselves in uh, in uh, in some solar systems. Uh, and in these uh, in these three years, we had uh, a very good uh, result. Uh, we achieved uh, more than 10 megawatt of uh, solar project and uh, 46 uh, uh, projects uh, to date. Uh, some of our uh, most uh, notable projects uh, are uh, um, uh, Deep Sea. Uh, and the Boom Figlioli uh, data logic. We work mainly with uh, um, European and uh, Italian uh, companies for the moment, uh, since uh, it is very easy for us to communicate. And the way 
the way we we develop uh, ourselves uh, and we bring the uh, the solar energy for the factories in uh, in Vietnam is to uh, make the the factory owner more sensitive about the energy issues in Vietnam. So I will explain to you a little bit uh, quickly the electricity market uh, in uh, Vietnam. Uh, you, you know very well Vietnam uh, have uh, an economy that is growing uh, very fast. Uh, and and uh, since uh, Vietnam is a very industrial country, it has uh, a, a lot of, uh, of the GDP is uh, achieved uh, from the industrial operations. And the industrial operations are very energy intensive. Therefore, the energy demand in Vietnam is growing steadily, uh, following very closely the, the GDP. And in the future, we expect uh, this energy demand to continue to grow. Uh, up to now, uh, Vietnam, in, in, a, in a similar way uh, to Italy a few years ago, it has uh, uh, the share of the electricity production is done mainly with uh, uh, hydropower and coal. Um, so. Vietnam in the past uh, uh, installed many hydropower plants and now they, they basically here they, they run out of uh, uh, rivers uh, suitable for the installation of hydropowers. So the main uh, development is done with a coal uh, with the coal power, which is uh, of course a very reliable technology, but it has many disadvantages in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions and, and other uh, externalities. Uh, that damage the, the environment. So since uh, Vietnam in, uh, in these years uh, is uh, really uh, pointing to be a key player in the international market, uh, um, is pushing to renew his uh, uh, sustainability management by switching uh, away from coal projects and uh, increasing the use of more clean uh, uh, sources of power, such as uh, wind and solar, and, uh, and also gas. In, hopefully, it will have in the future a, a electricity generation system that will be looking like uh, more like Italy. Uh, so more use of renewable energy and, uh, and natural gas, and less use of coal. This effect uh, creates, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, some uh, some uh, 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 effect that in the future uh, the price of the electricity when uh, switching away from the um, from the coal power technology and using more um, more uh, renewable and gas uh, uh, sources to produce the electricity we can achieve a better result uh, in terms of environment but uh, the cost of the electricity is likely to increase because the technology that uh, is used uh, to produce electricity is more advanced and uh, it takes a lot of investment to modernize uh, the, um, the infrastructure to generate electricity. So we, we are uh, very confident that in, in the future, the cost of the electricity uh, will rise. Uh, so how, how, we, uh, how we approach the uh, industries in the Vietnam uh, to make it more sensitive to the solar power. Uh, the solar power, when uh, uh, combined with uh, the rooftop of the factory, it has, has uh, many advantages. Uh, one of these uh, is the easy integration to the electrical system of the factory. Uh, it has uh, a, a very big saving in the, in the electricity bill. It uh, reduces the temperature of the roof and it gives the commitment of sustainability uh, of the factory. So here we can see an example uh, um, aside from the production of the electricity, when installing the solar uh, panels on the, on the roof of a factory in Vietnam, the temperature inside uh, is reduced a lot because uh, uh, Vietnam, especially in the south where we are based, the temperature is very hot, especially in the, in the factories. Uh, the, the use of uh, uh, steel buildings make the building very sensitive to the heat and to the temperature. And when installing the solar panels, uh, there is a very, uh, very good effect on the living conditions inside the factory. And, uh, and of course, this, uh, uh, this program is increasing the sustainable supply chain. So this is an example of uh, a factory um, load uh, when using the solar power. 
uh, we can see in the red line uh, the, the the power used on the factory for example this factory is uh, working day and night so they have uh, they, they work uh, continuously we can see in the red line is uh, the power that the factory is uh, consuming and the, at about 6 a.m the the solar power start to increase and uh, for for almost all the day the solar power is covering uh, uh, most of the consumption, even uh, in the middle of the day, is uh, higher than uh, than the consumption. In this case, uh, we can really reduce uh, the power use of this factory during the day. And considering uh, on a, on a monthly and a yearly uh, plan, this factory can reduce uh, the use of electricity by uh, almost four percent, which is a, which is a great uh, uh, result. Uh, at the end, uh, I want to close uh, my presentation uh, uh, giving some, uh, um, some, some uh, insight uh, on my experience uh, of uh, study in Italy and uh, working uh, in, uh, in Asia. So, um, as I mentioned before, I, I studied in, uh, in Milan, uh, I studied engineering, and I, uh, and I join uh, this uh, new at that time uh, master degree in uh, sustainability and energy engineering uh, it was a really really an amazing experience because i learned uh, uh, something that was uh, very advanced at that time and i'm still uh, at this time uh, putting into practice uh, what i learned more than 10 years ago so really uh, i feel uh, so uh, lucky about this and uh, not only inside the university but uh, uh, through the university, I had the chance to, to make the internship in an Italian company that is a, uh, is a focus on, uh, on energy. And I, I learned a lot in, uh, in this internship. So what, what, uh, uh, what, which advice I can give to the, to the new students that are considering to make a study experience uh, in, uh, in Italy? There are very, very good advantages that uh, um, the study environment in Italy can offer. Uh, the first one uh, is, uh, is the really uh, advanced offer and comprehensive offer. So if you are interested on a subject, there is really no limit on the amount of information that you can get. And uh, the, the, the professor is usually uh, very supportive and they can uh, give you some more uh, uh, textbooks or allow you to, to, um, to use the resources of the university to uh, um, study more about the subject you like. Uh, in addition to that, there is a very uh, big choice of extracurricular activities, uh, for example, lab, lab uh, workshop, uh, factory visits, uh, and uh, Erasmus. Uh, like uh, these are really uh, these activities uh, is uh, very easy to do when you are in Italy because you are inside a, a European context. So it's very easy to visit many countries at the same time and settle down in a new country, start from scratches and, and, uh, and study in a new country. It's not only uh, meaningful for, for, the, for what you study there, but uh, it is a, an amazing experience because uh, it makes you uh, start from zero by yourself. And it's very similar to what you, you will experience uh, in the work uh, and, uh, and a business life. Um, one, more, one more thing is that, um, that uh, I really admire the professor that I had. I was uh, uh, really inspired by, by the, the, the passion that they had and the, the, uh, the amount of the knowledge that they transfer uh, to us. And uh, when, when you have the chance of making uh, um, internship in in Italy, it is a very a very good uh, uh, a very good experience regardless of the salary. Some some companies uh, they pay a very low salary for the internship, but you should not care about this because uh, what you learn in the in the in the company, uh, many companies in Italy they have uh, maybe fifty years of experience or or some even more than fifty years of experience. You cannot get this almost anywhere in the, in the world so the the, the way the um, the passion and the and the process that you find inside the italian companies is very difficult to to find it uh, in other places so i yeah, i recommend you to make an experience a study experience uh, in italy uh, so thank you very much for uh, for your interest and if you have more questions you can uh, contact
Me. Thank you, Federico. This was exactly the purpose of this fair was study and work with Italy. So for the student is exactly this mixing of having uh, uh, of the possibility of also working in Italy that is important. And that was a characteristic of this fair. Now we have another two speakers, which I will ask them to be very short if they can. Uh, one is uh, Fabio Barletta, which is our second testimonial. And then finally, we have Anne, who was a student in the Italian, Vietnamese student in the Italian system. Fabio, please, the floor is yours. Fabio? Fabio Barletta, you have to. Fabio? Shall we do first, Anne? Anne, can you speak first? And then because possibly there is a problem with Fabio. Anne, please. Yes. Thank you, Professor. So hello, everyone. I am, uh, my name is Wang and I am attending master course in international relations at University of Florence. Actually, I am attending um, UNIFI after finishing my bachelor course in Pisa. The reason that I choose uni UNIFI is that uh, it offers many courses that reach my concerns about environment, energy, and climate change. In fact, thanks to professors from UNIFI, I am going to graduate in the end of this month. Uh, and the topic of the thesis is about sustainable development. Uh, the second thing that uh, attracts me about the university is uh, the international environment. So UNIFI offers courses both in Italian and in English, and I can choose as my preference. And moreover, the university also offers diverse language courses and uh, activities for international students and uh, about exchange program. The Visa Erasmus uh, in Europe, UNIFI also provides students many exchange pro, uh, opportunities outside European Union. For example, in Korea, in um, Vietnam. And in fact, last year I have had the opportunity to come back to my country for exchange program. Uh, and it was very useful for my uh, pre preparation for my thesis. Um, University of Florence also gives me the opportunities to participate in many international conferences and seminars, which are very essential for my study. And uh, the last thing is about the, my life in Florence. As you may know, Florence is very beautiful city and is very rich of culture. So I enjoy going to visit museums, walking around the city and it's, it's great experiences about my life in Florence. And uh, luckily my department is like very near the city center and it's very easy to go around the city because uh, the public transport here is very convenient. So I think studying and living in Florence or uh, in Italy is one of my best experience in my life. Um, but there is one thing that I want to recommend is that you should prepare well your Italian before coming in Italy, because uh, I, I have had like some difficulties when I was in Italy for the first time, but now I speak Italian better than English because Italians are very, very friendly and they always offer you help and they, uh, even when you have like difficulty with your language, they will like talk to you and they will help you with your language. So it's all of my experiences. Thank you for your attending. Thank you very much, Anne. Anne is a student which has been both in Pisa and in Florence. So here you have had basically three Tuscan universities in this webinar because, and we work together because in Tuscany, we think it's very, very important to cooperate. So students that come to Florence, they can go to Pisa, to Siena, and we work together. And now you will see in the Fabio 
I hope you have solved the technical problem. I hope you, hope you can intervene. Yes. And we will show you a video where you will actually see Tuscany also. Please, Fabio. Good afternoon and uh, excuse me for my English. I would like to introduce our company of innovative technologies. But before this, I show who you are, who we are with a very short video on the company. It should be. We are a company that carries a great amount of history, acquired through many years of experience and research. The union between technique and innovation has the name Leaflet. The driving desire of our brand has always been the search for uniqueness. Uniqueness, the value that uplifts designers and new creators to elevate something from commonplace to exclusive. For centuries, our country has been a source of great inspiration. Through our colors and art. Creativity and passion. Continuous development. Research of materials, attention to detail, craftsmanship, precision, and great dedication. These allow us to be the undisputed protagonists of the international scenarios. To look beyond the horizon, FB Inatech. Okay, so, thanks. Fabio, it's your turn to say something more. Uh, the quality of production and the uniqueness, it's called Credo. Uh, the company is, is rooted in many, many years of experience of the two founders. I'm one of those. My name is uh, Fabio Barletta. I have a successful experience in uh, building supercar, and my passion is research on composite material. Gioacchino Barletta, my partner, is creator of technique for the high fashion sector and has worked with the most important brand in the world. Our idea was to create some time innovative and unusually, which no one has called to before us. This production name is Leaflet. After years of research in 2018, uh, we started producing with our main office and the laboratory located in San Miniato, Tuscany. The economic and ideologic uh, difficult of our country have made uh, us value uh, international market where the leaflet production has met with a great interest and success. In less than two years, we expanded and now we have a whole office in Moscow, Nur Sultan, Toronto and Sofia. And the headquarter is located in Milano. We had uh, planned to go to Vietnam, but uh, unfortunately last year uh, the COVID pandemic uh, stopped us. We didn't make to Vietnam uh, and we are now waiting for the moment uh, to arrive uh, as soon as possible. But uh, the analysis, uh, histories and growth of this country, thanks to the, re the relationship uh, we have uh, 
established with uh, the Italian Chamber of Commerce, ICHAM, have uh, allowed the uh, who's to present and collect a lot of interest in whole production and uh, whole attention to artisan detail with webinar. This uh, convinced who's uh, to focus on this country by open uh, an office in Hanoi. Why Vietnam? Vietnam for whole, uh, for whose uh, is an important nation, both for the continuous development of the markets and has reference point for the Asian markets. For this reason, we consider future relationship with this country important and uh, we believe in uh, an excellent future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Fabio. We are really at the end of the webinar, but I would like to ask some of the students who are present here, especially from Vietnam, whether you have any question on Professor Ferrini, on uh, Professor Pulselli, Daniele La Rosa, Cristina Sutriani, or Federico Bastiani. Yes, uh, please, uh, Wong Pam. Unmute yourself. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, can you see me well now? Yes. Okay, so first of all, uh, I really thank you to Professor Zovanetti and speaker to sharing uh, these opportunities and sharing the work. So it's very interesting. Uh, from my side, I mean, uh, I'm from um, I'm from Vietnam, of course, and now currently I'm a postdoc a researcher in uh, CMCC, Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change, and also I'm former president of Vietnamese Student Association in Italy. So it was last year. So from my side, I really interested in the presentation of Professor Daniele La Rosa and Professor Cristina Stra uh, Satirano. Uh, because like we are doing similar thing, because like we are studying on uh, climate change, the impact of climate change on ecosystem and on society. So my first question is, is there any possibility that we can cooperate somehow? I mean, between the university and my research center and also Kafoskari University, because CMCC is also part of Kafoskari University. So recently in 2018, we found a new research center called CMCC Kyokchala uh, Kafoskari. And because like also we have some similar costs here in climate change, on climate change and related like the problem and uh, sustainability. And the second one, at the former of uh, at former president of Vietnamese Association in Italy, so I have like many contact with uh, students here. So I would like to add, like, if you have any chance or possibility, or if if you would like to connect with like Vietnamese student here, so I'm here, I'm willing to help and connect you with our community. So this is to comment from my side. So I don't know if uh, Professor Daniele or Professor Christina have some answer for that. Thank you. Let's see whether there is any other question before I give the floor to the speakers. Uh, is there any other question from students? No, so uh, one of you, Christina. Yeah, so th thank you very much. Uh, we are very happy that you enjoyed this uh, presentation. And uh, of course, we are very mm -hmm. positive about the, any collaboration and that's, uh, uh, that's, that will be a great pleasure to interact uh, with you. And uh, Dan, it, I think it's the same for Daniele. <laughs> I don't know if- uh... Yeah, yeah, I would like to add uh, some, something more, uh, more practical mm -hmm. about how to, to make this uh, the interaction. First of all, um, I think uh, I, for, for, for both the projects, there will be some training uh, uh, that will be done about the, the topics of the, the projects in, uh, uh, in Italy. Uh, so if you think you could be interested or some of your colleagues could be interested, I think this could be, um, you, it, it, it would be possible to join even if you are not directly part of the, of the project. And uh, something, another thing about this, that uh, these this projects are also um, uh, are also having uh, associated partners uh, that could be added even uh, uh, after the project has started. 
So another possibility is uh, if you're interested with, uh, with the topics of the projects that you can ensure or your, the association of students that you were uh, uh, that you are part of that you are uh, you were uh, talking before could be part of the of the project and as an associate partner so please uh, uh, feel free to contact us i don't know if you had uh, the the possibility to note our email address or you can find in the web and we will discuss uh, in any moment thank you very much yeah of course then you. you have all the email and everything uh, uh, in the slides which uh, will be available the recording of this webinar will be available and then all the universities are actually presenting themselves in uh, specific pages of the fair so you can find all the contacts and all the courses specialization postdoc uh, opportunities and things like that um yeah, thank you very much for the answer. Yeah, so for sure, I already take the screenshot of the contest, so I will be in touch with you in the future. And thank of you. course, as president of Vietnamese Association, one of the main uh, aim of this fair was exactly to get in touch with more Vietnamese uh, students. So it will be very yeah. good to be in touch with you and reach out some Vietnamese student for uh, as students to enroll in our courses, but also for trainship maybe, because maybe the, or facilitating trainship, because that could also be like Federico was suggesting a very good way to exploit uh, the fact of being in Italy or the fact of having the knowledge, uh, sharing, share knowledge with uh, factory firms in Italy. Is there any other question? Uh, yeah, Marco Biati. Uh, in the chat uh, says that uh, Marco Biati is the science attaché in Hanoi. Uh, it's uh, these COVID times which make moving difficult. Contact him if you think I can support cooperation between Italy and Vietnam from here. So uh, this is actually very good. Um, we work very closely with the science attaché, usually all the universities, because it's very, very important for the university to have uh, contact with the, um, I mean, with the embassy or the consulate, but through the scientific attaché, because uh, they know much better. They are from university background. They know much better what are the problems and they can really help us. Thanks, Marco, for this. So if there is no other question, from the student nor from um, other participants. Let me um, thank, uh, really thank um, all the participants. Uh, I mean, of course, the three university which uh, helped me to organize this webinar, but especially Federico and Fabio, because I think that their uh, testimonial have been particularly important. Um, Federico, uh, actually also linked the way the study, he, where he studied, uh, the atmosphere, the environment of what he studied, the fact that um, in Italy, we are much better than what actually the ranking, international rankings say, if you come and experience the courses. It's, uh, so I think uh, it came out very clearly from what Federico said, that is very important. Italian university, they have a lot of courses. Some of them are really innovative. Some of others are not, may not be, but some of them are really, really innovative. And therefore this is not uh, caught many times by international ranking. But I think we are competitive at the world level. And I think you can learn a lot by coming for it to Italy. So for the students, apply to any Italian university. We are not here to compete with ourselves. We are, we are here actually to cooperate I believe very strongly in cooperation. That's what we do in Tuscany. We cooperate between university and that's very important. And we want to cooperate more with firms. So thank you very much to uh, Fabio and Federico for their testimonial. Thank you for, uh, to the students for participating and for the colleagues for their presentation, which I thought were very interesting and very challenging. And we saw very different Hanoi uh, for the future with all the trees presented by Francesco Ferrini with no emission, for, uh, moving Siena to Hanoi from Federico and with all the projects that Danielle and Cristina showed. So thanks to everyone. Uh, if you have no question, I'll, uh, you, I, I thank you and bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye bye. bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye all. Bye. bye.